If you clicked on this video, you probably seen this type of mixes on YouTube. DNB jungle mixes from PS2, N64 or Dreamcast games, which have a certain feel and sound to them. Maybe it's just nostalgia or internet magic, but this music is slowly gaining back its popularity. Well, I'll show you a couple of ways to make, process and add a bit of sprinkles to your sound, if you want to make atmospheric jungle from 90s. At first let's start with pads. Pads are heart and soul of this type of jungle tracks. Let's start with the vital pad that I created. As you can see we have three oscillators. The key about all these pads are basically unison levels. The first oscillator is pitched 7 semitones up, added the maximum amount of unison, a little bit of detune. The second oscillator is just some brown noise with a little bit of unison as well and a little bit of detune. The same with the quad saw. Three LFOs and we use LFO to make some movements and, and make those pads evolve. In the effects tab we have turned chorus, delay, phaser and reverb. The first LFO is connected to the chorus mix knob, the second oscillator is connected to the phaser, also the mix knob, and the third LFO is connected to the third oscillator to the level. I used two EQ8s in order to shave off lower frequencies and high frequencies, and we're gonna make all those pads pretty mid-rangey, because we need to leave space for our bass and also just some high-end for percussion and drums. The second pad has a similar idea, the same idea with the unison levels, a little bit of detuning, the pitch is 7 semitones up, an additional noise level just adds some grittiness to the sound. I used two filters just to shave off high end and boost a little bit of it, and in effects I use delay as well with flanger and reverb. The envelope is the same, long attack and long release, and instead of using chorus in the vital I use Tel Chorus LX plugin, which is free and in certain ways is a much better chorus. It just widens the sound and makes it brighter and more interesting. Also using EQ8s just to shave off low end and boost a little bit of mid range up. I also use a utility pretty much on every MIDI channel just to control the gain of the knobs. Another thing that you can use on your pads is using some kind of a delay like Magic Dice by Baby Audio. This plugin is particularly interesting because it has just a random generated delay effect just to make your sound even more interesting and unique and then just render uh, the type of reverb that you enjoyed into an audio clip and use it as your pad. This one I made in Serum. The same thing with the unison levels, as you can see both of them have a unison levels up. Adding unique flangers, uh, I used flanger minus here. The LFO tool connected to the cutoff section, so when the pad plays... Long attack and long release as well here. And in the effects section I didn't use pretty much anything, just because I wanted to use Valhalla Supermassive. I already showed you and you probably know about it, but Valhalla Supermassive has a great presets of reverbs and this one was particularly interesting in this type of pad. And the last pad idea that I wanted to show you is using the stock Ableton wavetable. So here I have two oscillators. The first one is sub 3 from Basics and the second oscillator is from Formant Riser. Just shave off the high frequencies and a little bit of low end, make the same envelope and use your LFO to add more movement in the matrix tab. I automated oscillator 1 positioning, oscillator 2. In the unison tab you choose your shimmer mode, add some voices, lower the amount and it sounds like this. 
It doesn't feel that special yet, but we use the cores that I showed you here with the second option, lower the stereo width a little bit. I also added Fracture plugin here with the regenerating Dreamcatcher preset. And I also use Valhalla Supermassive, just some reverb with splashy synth preset and utility in the end just to add some gain to the pad. Usually the drums used in jungle tracks are pre-recorded. You either can use samples of recorded drums or you can use a VST, some kind of a VST that imitates the sound of real drums. And the VST that I really like, which is pretty close to real drums, is this one, SSD Sampler 5. It has a free version, which I use here, so this plugin you can use for free and it has interesting and unique sounds. I didn't use everything here, but kicks and hi-hats fit perfectly well. Laying your drums with some kind of a break. As you can see on the break, I use Sooth 2 plugin just to remove some muddiness on the low end and adding some width with the wider plugin. You can also use your sample options here. And this is the simple thing that you can do in order to make your drums more interesting in the mix. You can, as I already did in some of my videos, but I love doing it, is separating hi-hats on the right and left channel, make them more stereo. So you delete a couple of hi-hats in, in one MIDI clip and remove other on the other one, so the both channel create this unique from one ear to another effect. Let's move to the bass. The bass options I think are pretty limited in this kind of genre. I think the guitar bass will be the best option here, but you can use also 808s. I used three plugins here, so the first one is APBL2. This one is one of the best free guitar plugins that you can get. So this pattern is an F major. Just because our pad is also an F major, so I just took the lower notes as kind of a bass notes and made it one octave lower and just changed a couple of notes so the bass will be more interesting, playful. Some of the notes go up, some of them go down, adding rhythmic entries to the song, so the bass will be a prominent and an interesting instrument in your overall mix. The second guitar that I used here is from Labs Guitar. I also showed you my Labs Piano, which I use almost in every video. And bass guitar here is really good as well, and it has a similar kind of sound. In this case I made the attack lower, so I just lowered the velocity of all the notes, so the guitar becomes more muffled and more bassy rather than this heavy attack guitar that we have in the first variant. So colliding drums, bass and pad all together. And after you have your drums, pads and bass, then you can start adding in some interesting things, some ear candy, which are also can be either melody, plucks or some kind of effect. The first thing that will work very well is, is using instruments like BBC Symphony Orchestra, using flutes, clarinets, horns, just to fill in the gaps and add more depth to your sound. I also used piano here with some delay and gain. As you can see, the melody is written also in F major, all the notes are here. Just some plucky sounds. These ones are flutes, these are horns, which are just cut up parts of our pads that we used here. And the last one is your piano, which are also just our chords, original chords, which I just made more complex, adding these two notes above 
which makes these chords more jazzy. And as you can see, I changed the length of each note and the velocity as well, so these chords feel more lively, like you play it on piano yourself. Another thing that you can do is adding some kind of a plug into your mix. Here I used some serum plugs, which are just two analog signs with filtering, unison levels as well, LFO tool on the cutoff section, hyperdimension and reverb. This one is in the back of the mix and I just added some delay as well with the utility and erosion. Erosion in this case adds this graininess which feels like this kind of old PlayStation 2 feel, arcadey 8-bit sound which makes this like shimmering effect. The same idea with other plugs that I used here. Here I automated my erosion to make this pads kind of versatile, changing width with the utility and changing some gain and finding this perfect spot in the mix. This plug is just the first basic sine wave with a lot of unison, plucky envelope, MG low with high resonance and automating cutoff with our envelope and in the effects section just some reverb and delay. You can kind of see the similar pattern in all of those plugs and sounds that we use. We add a lot of delay which adds this dreamy effect to the overall sound. Next plug is just some standard arcader preset from Serum, which also works really well. With additional flanger and cabinet, cabinet to add this nostalgic brightness and warmth to the sound and flanger just to add more movement as well. You can automate the spin knob to add some more movement to the sound and make it not so repetitive. And I also used piano here, kind of as a background instrument as well, as I already showed you Labs Piano, with Valhalla Supermassive Reverb, auto panning it and using utility to widen sound and make it louder. And in the mix... Yeah, these are just a couple of tricks that you can use, but they are very effective, they are very versatile and you can make your sound interesting, unique and make awesome jungle tracks PS2 and 64 Dreamcast style. Thank you for watching this video and good luck on making your own sound. Bye!